Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about pure bending moment which is beyond elastic moment and it's less than plastic bending moment. We want to check what would be the permanent strain in the cross section when we remove the bending moment in this range. Also, we can calculate the residual stress due to unloading or removing the load or removing the bending moment. Let's have a material which is uh, the same intention and compression, sigma and epsilon, 250 megapascal and epsilon y. Let's assume E is 200 gigapascal. So epsilon y will be 0 0.00125. And the cross section is a simple rectangle cross section, 60 millimeter width and 120 millimeter height for depth. So first we are going to calculate the elastic and plastic bending moment and after that we will check what would be the strain in the external edge of the cross section. So W elastic for this cross section is 60 millimeter or I will write down this is B, this is H. So it will be BH squared divided by 6, 60, 120 squared divided by 6, 144,000 millimeter cubic. And W plastic for rectangle cross section is BH squared divided by 4. So remember that this is um, valid if the material is uh, the same in tension and compression. Uh, in the previous video, we went through rectangle cross section but with different uh, behavior in tension and compression so it will be 216,000 and now elastic bending moment will be sigma y times w elastic which is 250 times 144 36 kilonewton meter and plastic is sigma y times w plastic which is 54 kilonewton meter. Uh, for the residual stress, it's very straightforward because when we apply the 36 kilonewton meter or beyond that, then uh, the cross section is partially plastic. And if we want to unload the cross section, we have 36 kilonewton meter plus the moment that we apply in a way that the cross section is a steel elastic. We can refer to one of the videos that we had about introduction to plastic bending moment. You can watch it if you want, uh, but I can explain uh, briefly how it works. Assume we have a material which is behaving the same in tension and compression, and instead of force, we have bending moment and epsilon relation. We will see that uh, it is not uh, linear in this video. Here is M plastic and here is M elastic. So if we apply the bending moment beyond elastic, for example here, then we can see that it has more capacity to be elastic. So if it is exactly in the M plastic, we have two times M plastic. Or if we are exactly in M elastic, we have two times M elastic capacity. But for the residual stress, it's uh, pretty simple. Let's have a look if, for example, M is going to be 50 or 45 kilonewton meter or 50, 50 kilonewton meter, what would happen? So as far as the moment is between M elastic and M plastic, we can say that the cross section is partially plastic. And we can calculate what is the height of the cross section to be plastic. For this, sigma y, which is 250 megapascal. And then let's say that uh, y is half of elastic core. And h over 2 minus y is the half of plastic uh, depth of the section. Now F1, F2, so F1 will be 
sigma y times b times h divided by 2 minus y and f2 will be sigma y divided by 2 times b times y and then we are looking for y and here we have m which is 50 kilonewton meter so y1 is y plus h over 2 minus y divided by 2 we can write it down h over 2 plus y divided by 2 by combining these two and y2 will be two third of y now m will be sigma f i y i we know that it's completely symmetric here we will have again f2 and f1 with the same calculation and with the same layer on y1 and y2 as a result instead of summation i can write it down with two times f1 y1 plus f2 y2 so now m is 50 kilonewton meter two times f1 is sigma y times b times h divided by 2 minus y times h divided by 2 plus y divided by 2 plus sigma y divided by 2 times b y times 2 third of y we can substitute sigma y as 250 megapascal b is 60 millimeter and h is 120 millimeter so y will be 28.28 28.3 millimeter now we want to see if we unload or remove the bending moment what would be the residual stress so in unloading the cross section has more capacity to behave in linear phase so sigma is m y divided by i or m divided by w elastic sigma in unloading is 50 10 power by 6 newton millimeter divided by elastic section modulus which was 144,000 347.2 megapascal we can see that it's beyond 250 megapascal but if you look at the uh, capacity it was 250 from tension side or compression side and 250 from the other side so when we want to uh, check if this is valid or not it should be less than sigma yielding in tension plus sigma yielding in compression so this is 500 megapascal for now and this is valid it means that in unloading or removing the bending moment the elastic theory is valid and the equation coming from m y divided by i is valid as far as it's uh, in elastic phase now coming back to the cross section in the loading phase when m is 50 kilonewton meter uh, 28 millimeter is in uh, elastic behavior and the rest which is half of h 60 minus 28.3 31.7 is plastic the same in the tension side and we can sketch the cross section in unloading phase so in the unloading phase uh, the cross section has more capacity to be or to remain uh, elastic so we calculated and it was 347.2 now we can just uh, add these two together very simple the only matter is to calculate in this elevation what the stress in unloading is so we know that this is 28.3 millimeter and this is 60 millimeters so it will be 28.3 divided by 60 times 347.2 megapascal 28.3 divided by 60 347.2 so it will be 163.8 megapascal now we can see that if we remove the load in the top it was 215 compression and in the unloading it was 347 so as a result minus 250 megapascal plus 347.2 megapascal will be around 100 97.2 megapascal in tension then in the elevation of 28.3 from the center or to, from the neutral axis it was 250 megapascal in compression and now it is 163.8 megapascal in tension minus 250 plus 
163.8 minus 86.2 megapascal and in the center line it will be completely zero this is the center line so in the top it will be 97.2 in tension and in the 28.3 it will be in compression 86.2 and the same in the other side so in the bottom we can see that it was in compression and tension uh, it's exactly in the opposite direction so here is the uh, residual stress after removing this bending moment of 50 kilonewton meter now this is pretty straightforward you calculate the loading uh, and determine what is the elevation of uh, of the elastic cross section for any cross section and after that when you remove the load as far as the elastic theory is uh, valid you calculate the stress in different levels according to elastic equation m by divided by i and then you just sum these two cross sections as what we did now uh, we are going to calculate also the relation between bending moment and the uh, strain in the outer edge of the cross section for this i will go with the uh, parametric calculation to see how it should be calculated then we can apply the numbers for sure so suppose we have a rectangle cross section subjected to bending moment and the cross section is b times h with the depth of h and width of b m elastic is always sigma y times b h square divided by six representing the elastic section modulus and the material with the yielding stress of sigma y in tension and compression and plastic bending moment sigma y times bh square divided by 4 representing the section modulus in plastic now if the bending moment is something between elastic and plastic bending moment so we know that the cross section will be partially plastic let's say that the elevation uh of being elastic in one side is y so now we can calculate the force f1 and f2 this height is h divided by 2 minus y so f1 is b times h divided by 2 minus y times sigma y f2 is b times y times sigma y divided by 2 as far as its triangle Levier arm for F1 is Y plus H over 2 minus Y divided by 2. And we can just simplify this by combining these two fraction and the constant Y. Y2 is 2 thirds of Y. And we know that ending moment should be calculated according to sigma Fi Yi. And in this case, as far as the force in the top and bottom are the same, with the same levier arm so it will be two times f1 y1 plus f2 y2 so here i prefer we go through matcat which is uh, easier to solve so here we can write down m as a function for now b and h and sigma y but later on i will change this to uh, epsilon this will be two times sigma y times b and now it can be 1 over 2 times h divided by 2 minus y times h divided by 2 plus y also the moment is a function of y as well then plus 1 over 3 times y square let's check uh, 1 over 2 h over 2 minus y h over 2 plus y sigma y and b are Actored and here one over it. Okay, looks good. So this bending moment is correct when the bending moment is elastic and plastic bending moment. Now we know that uh, in a polar Bernoulli beam, the distortion due to shear force is completely neglected or it, it's not significant. As a result, the S strain is always linear. Up to now, I was sketching only the stress, and now this is the strain it doesn't matter if it is uh, plastic partially plastic or elastic 
it's always a line but there is a big uh, difference here when it's less than elastic so m is less than m elastic the s train here is less than epsilon y and the relation of epsilon equals to sigma divided by e is valid so sigma is e times epsilon when we are talking about elastic phase now if we are talking about partially plastic phase for the stress we know that it's uh, not linear anymore some part of the element is in plastic and some part is in elastic mode but the strain is still linear the difference here is that in the outer edge of the cross section this epsilon is greater than epsilon y and in the elevation that the cross section is starting to be elastic or is behaving elastic let's say we assume this length is y and this is epsilon y so here sigma is constant as uh, 250 or sigma y uh, for the plastic part and for the elastic it is uh, decreasing up to the neutral axis now here m is between m elastic and m plastic as a result epsilon in the outer edge is not following the uh, epsilon y it's greater than that and it's keeping the plane remains plain as far as it's a polar Bernoulli beam so in this case I can write down epsilon for the outer edge divided by h divided by 2 is the same as epsilon y divided by y so here I can say that y is h over 2 epsilon y divided by epsilon when y is h divided by 2 it means that uh, it's in the elastic phase or in the limit of elastic and then gradually y is starting to be smaller and smaller smaller until y is completely zero which is the limit so here in the elastic phase i can calculate bending moment according to the stress so if we sketch for the elastic phase and assume this is stress m is a smaller than m elastic so this is sigma which is less than sigma y and i can write down that this sigma is e times epsilon so in this case moment can be f1 times y1 times 2 as far as we have two sides f1 is half of sigma times h over 2 times b this is area and then y is 2 thirds of h over 2 times 2 so if we just simplify this uh, so it will be sigma times bh squared divided by 6 as you can see it's following the uh, elastic equation and instead of sigma i can write down it's e times epsilon so here m will be e times epsilon times bh squared divided by 6 if m is less than m elastic and for m greater than m elastic but less than m plastic we calculated the equation and here we have it and if m is between m elastic and m plastic we already have the equation but now i would like to change the equation from y to epsilon domain so let's write the equation instead of a function of sigma y be a function of epsilon so sigma y is a constant value and then we can just substitute instead of y epsilon for this we can use the if command in matcat control x here you can find the program and then you can add if so here if epsilon is less than epsilon is less than or equal to epsilon y then the equation is from the first equation so it will be e times epsilon times w elastic so here i can write down what is w elastic it's b times h square divided by six later on we can define b and h 
so i can just and also sigma y so instead of m as a function of those we can write down m as a function of epsilon and then here else we need to write down this equation and instead of y we can write down h divided by 2 times epsilon y divided by epsilon so wherever we have this we can just substitute so here is the equation of m let's have b to be 60 millimeter h to be 120 millimeter and then let's have sigma y to be for example 250 megapascal and e is 200 gigapascal what else epsilon y is sigma y divided by e so if you want to see more uh, significant of the value you're calculated here you can come to the results in the math format menu and then instead of three you can go for example up to five so now our equation is a function of uh, epsilon and epsilon y now we can plot this m versus epsilon m as a function of epsilon and here is epsilon and then we need to have some values for epsilon so epsilon will be from zero and then for example you can go with very small uh, interval up to if it's 0 0.00125 we can go to 0 0.0025 or even 250 for example so here is how it looks like here you can change the unit to kilonewton meter if you go to more values here you can see that we are in the 54 kilonewton meter which was the uh, plastic bending moment now we can limit the s train to let's say to 0, 0, 0025 and here we can see how it is changed to be uh, elastic and then start to be partially plastic let's go through 50 that we have better understanding and in the plot we can add horizontal for 36 if we come back to here the bending moment for the elastic was 36 and also we can add another one horizontal marker to 54 here we can see that it is gradually approaching to that value by increasing the s-strain up to 36 kilonewton meter we can see that the behavior is completely linear after that unlike the bars in compression and tension that we had another video earlier to discuss about changing the behavior from linear to be non-linear it's not a line now it's a, a curve that we can see how it is changing now if for example we have a bending moment of 50 kilonewton we can see what would be the strain at this level coming back to here where we had 50 kilonewton meter applied to the cross section and then we solved it for what would be the residual stress after unloading now we are going to check what would be the uh, permanent strain in the furthest edge of the cross section after removing the load here we can solve the equation for y or we can solve the equation for epsilon to find out what would be the uh, strain when we remove the load so coming back to MATCAT first of all we want to see what would be the strain at this level there are uh, several methods to calculate that the first method is uh, to determine from the graph that we already sketched directly from solving the equation or the relation between moment and also a strain so for this we can use the solver block to solve the equation and we need to have a guess value for example epsilon guess is going to be so surely it should be greater than epsilon y i will go with 0 0.0014 and then you need to have constraint which in this point it will be a function of epsilon guess which needs to be equal to 50 kilonewton meter and then epsilon 
will be find epsilon yes so here we can see epsilon will be if we want to see with more significant digits so it will be 0 0.00265 and here we can add this uh, vertical marker with 0 0.00265 here we can see exactly in this point we have the uh, strain which is in the partial plastic behavior of the cross section now we want to see if we remove the load completely what would happen to this case there are again several methods to calculate the first would be just a sketch a line parallel to the linear part of this uh, graph for that uh, we can solve it by trigonometry or triangle principle and here i can sketch a line parallel to the uh, linear phase so the moment here is 36 kilonewton meter and the moment here is 50 kilonewton meter so the s strain in this triangle here is 0 0.00125 and i'm going to write the equation between triangle number one and triangle number two here so let's name this value to be x 50 kilonewton meter divided by x will be as same as 36 divided by 0 0.00125 so here x will be 50 divided by 36 times 0 0.00125 which will be 00174 and as a result here we can find out the permanent strain so permanent strain will be here it was 0 0.00265 so it will be 0 0.00091 millimeter per millimeter so this is the permanent strain using the graph from moment and strain we can cross check this value with the relation of stress and strain relationship coming back to the earlier phase calculation we can see that uh, when we loaded the cross section by 50 kilonewton meter as the bending moment uh, the s strain was 0 0.00265 and the stress was in compression 250 when we removed this 250 then the stress was in tension 97.2 as the uh, residual stress so it should be noted that this residual stress is in a way that we do not have any external moment but we have internal stress which is completely in balance but there is no load externally applied to the cross section for this uh, the easiest way might be to sketch the relation between stress and strain so here in compression and in tension tension side compression side so in the loading so 250 megapascal is the limit in compression and the s strain in this level is 0 0.00125 but as we know when the load or the moment is increased to 50 kilonewton meter then it is not linear anymore it goes beyond this 0 0.00125 without increasing any tension or stress inside the uh, cross section so it will come to 0 0.00265 we already calculated and it's somewhere here it should be noted that when we remove the load the bending moment is zero but the stress is not so after uh, reloading the stress will be around uh, 97.2 if i recall it correctly yes here we can see that it was 0 97.2 megapascal in tension so here if this is 250 then 97.2 megapascal in tension will be here we need to sketch a line parallel to the elastic or um, the slope of modulus of elasticity better to go with one color so here this is the permanent strain and our target is to calculate this permanent strain so again we can use triangle principle this uh, height is 250 plus 97.2 megapascal in total 300 
47.2 megapascal and we are looking for this value of let's say x so 200 347.2 megapascal divided by x should be as same as 250 divided by 0.00125 from here x will be 0.00174 we can see that it's exactly the same value we calculated earlier now the permanent strain here will be 0.00265 which is this distance minus x so it will be 0.00091 we can see that without any bending moment after removing the load the moment in the moment strain graph we have no moment but we have permanent strain but when it comes to the stress strain relation or graph we can see that the stress is not zero even though the moment or the corresponding moment is zero that was the end of this example this example was about applying the bending moment in a rectangle cross section which is behaving the same in tension and compression it was a plastic perfectly plastic material and then we applied a bending moment beyond the elastic moment and then we removed it we could notice that even though the moment is zero in the cross section but the stress is not and we confirm with two methods calculating from bending moment versus a strain diagram or a stress and a strain also we covered the residual stress calculation thank you for watching see you next time Bye.